What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Honeystead. So, I thought I was gonna miss this opportunity to harvest one of the plants that has been super beneficial for me, especially when it comes to poison ivy, poison oak, all the poisons pretty much because, well, I tend to go into the woods quite a bit and I have learned that there are some beneficial plants that you can use, especially when it comes to all the poisons. At least the ones that you can get externally, you know, like the rashes. So let's go introduce you to a plant that I saw the other day while I was driving along the creek and see if you recognize it. And then we're gonna talk about what we can do with it and how we can use it to help fight off all of those nasty, some of the not so nice plants that cause itches in places, especially when you're out foraging in the woods. So come on, let's go. Are you gonna come with us, Miss Vine? <laughs> What are you eating? What are you trying to catch flies? Are you gonna come with us? All right, old girl, let's go. We're gonna go down to the creek. Come on. You're not being very productive, Violet. That's not, we're not, you're supposed to be working with me. Really? Are you going to come now? <laughs> All right, good girl. We're going to make a pit stop and go get somebody to bring with us because it's a beautiful day. So, pit stop first. So not only is Violet enjoying a drink, but if you look very closely and listen, you'll hear that all of our honeybees are also enjoying a drink. And this is definitely one of my favorite things to do is come down and watch them enjoy this water. So this beautiful little plant right here is uh, jewelweed, or also known as impatience Capsensis. Capes, caps. <laughs> I am probably going to butcher the scientific name, but I do know of it as jewelweed. Now, jewelweed is one that you can do a few different things with. Um, it's a very juicy plant, and sometimes what I found is when I have gone through a patch of poison ivy, or I might have to go through a patch of poison ivy, I'll take the leaves and I'll kind of rub them around. I'll get all that juice that's on the inside and I will rub it on the area where I might be exposed to poison ivy or poison oak, poison sumac, even bug bites. Um, but you can use it kind of like a preventative measure for the poison ivies um, and or after, after you've already experienced it. So there's a few different things that you can do with this plant. I've seen a lot of people who will take this and they will chop it up, macerate it up, and turn it into a, a tincture um, to use externally as a wash. We have used it with witch hazel, which is absolutely lovely. And the other thing that I've seen people do, which I do want to try this year, is they will harvest some specifically to just store in the freezer as needed. So I'm going to harvest just what I need so that we can go ahead and turn it into something up in the apothecary or possibly in the house if my, if my grandma wants to, to join us on that. I didn't bring her down this creek because I would hate for her to fall, but we're going to go introduce this plant to her as well. Um, but this little plant, it's self-seeding. It's pretty um, predominant in this area. It likes to grow in wet 
wet moist lands right beside a creek which I am literally standing right beside my creek right now and um, it's one that I've also found and this is where I think it's absolutely beautiful um, but it tends to grow next to the plants that cause the reaction so uh, if I look all throughout here which I already see it I'm not even gonna walk trump back through there right now but um, jewelweed tends to grow next to next to poison ivy which I think is remarkable and now when it comes to harvesting I'm only gonna harvest what I need but you can harvest the whole root it is fine it's not gonna come back next year but it will absolutely self seed so we're just gonna like shake it a little bit and get all those little seed pods to hopefully drop um, but no matter what, we have a whole bunch all throughout our creek, um, which I think is, is very lovely. This will grow about like three to five feet. I haven't seen it very much taller than about three feet. And it's easy for me to identify mainly if you're new to foraging by looking at the little flowers. I think the flowers look like a little pat, <laughs> which I think are absolutely adorable. Um, you can use the flowers, you can use the stems, you can use the leaves, and you can use the root. Now, if you don't have the flowers to help indicate like, hey, this is what it is, one of the other things that I found, and I'm gonna pull, I'm just gonna pull the root up. It's very soft to come up. Um, but another easy way to identify it is by looking at the roots itself. And you can kind of see they tend to be like a purplish red color. That is another very easy way to, to be able to identify. It also has like little nodules. I would, I'm gonna say nodules, um, when you're looking at the stem itself and it kind of has like a very translucent appearance as well. Um, and then I also look at the leaves. The leaves are just super delicate and super soft, but we're gonna go ahead and just pull this one plant up and maybe another one, cause I'm gonna, maybe one or two or three, or three. Rule of thumb, if you only have three plants, only harvest one. If you have more than that, obviously, be mindful of what you're taking. And also, you know, I appreciate that this plant is growing here and um and i know a lot of people i know a lot of people will will thank the plant but i thank god i think that it is amazing that there are these plants that are growing right next to the things that are going to help it and i think that in my eyes that um I mean, it's a perfect design, right? <laughs> so um, say your thanks, harvest what you need, make sure that you leave more for, you know, to continue, um, shake some seeds and uh, utilize it to its fullest. This is gonna make amazing, amazing, juicy, <laughs> a juicy witch hazel tincture for me um, because I will guarantee you that the temperatures are starting to drop and that means I'm probably going to be in the woods a lot more and that means that poison ivy is something that I'm absolutely going to be exposed to and I've had a lot of people ask about poison ivy and what I would use and this is the plant that I 100% um, choose to use. What are you doing? <laughs> you old girl. And what's nice about this plant growing right next to the creek, all you have to do is wash the roots off <laughs> um, because really it's, it's not that bad. Now we have had a very dry spell here. And so I've, the last couple of days, we've had some tremendous rainstorms, which I am so very thankful for. Um, and in fact, the day this past weekend we had our tea and tincture workshop where we got to meet some pretty amazing people and um, make a lot of fun things from the apothecary and just share our love for all the things that we are doing here with them. And uh, as much as I needed the rain, I was praying that we were 
not going to get it <laughs> during the event and sure enough not more than an hour or two later we got a beautiful storm so um, our creek looks a lot happier right now than what it has in the last couple of weeks um, but oh look what we have here we've got some horsetail right here uh, a few months ago my mom and I put out a really fun video about horsetail and if you're interested in learning about its medicinal properties and how to use it I will make sure to put that video above and possibly down below if I remember the above part but it'll definitely be on the down below part um, but yep this is a pretty interesting plant and one that you might want to learn about now I have more jewelweed here that you can see it doesn't have any flowers on it this one right here has some flowers on it we're going to go ahead and leave that and then i have a few more back um, back here throughout here that does have flowers on it so i'm just going to go ahead and take this one and we will wash off the roots as well Actually, this was more than one. And look, another beautiful little one growing right there. Oh my gosh. Do you mind grabbing that book out of that basket right there? Yes. And yes. I will set this, we'll set that in here. Yeah. Aren't they pretty? Oh my gosh, they're gorgeous. Look at the little hat. It looks like a little hat, a little flower. I know, I know, look at this. They're so pretty. soft the plants not hard yeah. at all yeah. and so this is just gonna go we're just gonna kind of chop it up kind of like that nothing oh I see what if you the mean. leaves are yucky like mm -hmm. super yucky just set them just set. Yeah. yeah but if they're if they're nice keep mm -hmm. them um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this in the freezer until I'm ready to use yeah, it but I have to make it a little bit small okay. um, if the the big roots don't worry about them mm -hmm. And I'll work on chopping up some for the witch hazel. Yeah. The majority of the juice <laughs> that we are looking for is in the actual stem. So you can see how much moisture is actually in, in the, uh, the plant, um, the plant itself. Now this is what we're going to use to expose to the, the actual witch hazel that we're going to put in a quart size jar. So I'm just going to chop it up and put it in a mason jar and then just top off the jar with the witch hazel. We did get a little bit of extra so that our plan is we're just going to put it in the freezer for right now for Ziploc bags. I'm going to do my research because I'd like to see if I could freeze dry some. I know a lot of people have not had very good luck when it comes to drying the jewelweed because how, how much moisture is in the plant itself it's very hard to dry this plant and uh, try to use it in that way um, without it molding so I am going to absolutely have some already set up in witch hazel put some in some big ziploc bags so we can put it in the freezer for when we might need it throughout the winter um, or fall or until next year until until it comes back and it's ready for us to harvest and then I do want to see about going ahead and freeze drying just a little bit to pull out some of the moisture but not all of it and my goal would be I'd like to try to reconstitute it in some oil that we can maybe turn it into a salve. I don't know if I would turn this into a salve from a fresh plant matter just because of how much moisture is in it. I think it would end up turning the oil rancid. So my that's kind of my plan. I'm gonna play around with this and see, but my grandma's helping chop some up for me because we have quite a bit and I found another patch that is, um, 
a little bit larger that uh, that I was excited to to harvest a little bit more. But the parts that we're using, pretty much all of it. Um, if the root ball has a lot of mud on it, um, I'm not necessarily going to reuse that part, but I'd like to try to get to this part itself uh, if I can, depending. And I mean, it's it's such a crazy little. You would think that this plant's a lot harder than what it is. Um, but yes, this is used as a poison ivy remedy. It's used to have as a preventative as well. You can use it on bug bites. You can use it on bee stings. It has properties in it, um, anti-inflammatory properties. Uh, it has a natural antihistamine in it too to help. So if you're having like a antihistamine, like a reaction, um, this plant would offer that relief. The other thing that I found was kind of interesting when reading about it, uh, there are some people who have used this for eczema. So if you tend to suffer from eczema, this might be the plant that you might need to go to. And it is also antifungal uh, to use and you can use it in, you can use it in witch hazel, you can use it in alcohol. I think witch hazel is a little bit easier. Um, it doesn't burn as much uh, on your skin and I like the smell of it, but look how hollow how hollow it is so it feels kind of like like celery that's like the best way I feel like to describe it is, is it feels like celery <laughs> so I'm gonna chop up what I can get as much of the liquid as possible and then I did pull a book for some reference for you um, that I wanted to show which I didn't show while we were out foraging only because I do know the plant but I want to show you what Actually, I'm gonna do that right now. I wanna show you my Peterson Field Guide because that's the biggest thing when it comes to foraging. A lot of people get a little nervous about uh, going out and, and picking plants and if they don't necessarily know this plant, um, like I do, I wanted to offer a book so that it might offer you a little bit more comfort and ease to, to be able to do this. And I mean, if my Nana can do it, <laughs> you guys can do this. So this is my Peterson field guide. I have a lot of people that reach out and ask about where to find the books that we reference and we use. I have a Amazon store where I put all of our books that we use here in the apothecary medicinally, learning how to, you know, how to do herbal medicine as well as my foraging books. Um, but what I love about this book is there's pictures and also depending on the flower, the color that you're looking at, it's color coordinated. So it's super simple, easy for me to be able to find it. Um, so I, you know, obviously I looked over the color of the flower. Now I already knew the name of jewelweed, um, but if you need to reference the flower color, that's what you would reference. And then it goes into a diff just a, a quick description on the plant. It's jewelweed, spotted touch me not. I've already pronounced this scientific name which in patients cap I'm gonna just butcher it I already said it earlier so we're not gonna say it again um, but it is a three to five feet the leaves are oval and toothed which basically means that they are oval shape and they have they're not smooth so they do have uh, have the teeth on the on the actual leaf itself um, I also just, I know the feeling of it, um, which is another way for me, uh, but again, for somebody who's new, like I said, that root, looking where it grows, it does grow near the water or wetlands, um, but one of the easiest ways to, to be able to identify it is 100% by the little flower. But not always are you actually harvesting it when there's flowers. There were a lot of plants that didn't have the flowers on them. I'm a big believer that you take your, take the books when you're out foraging, take the ones that you might need. And this is always and, and will always be my go-to guide because in the event of, I might, in the event of, I might need it or somebody might need it. We have a quick reference and it's not something that's on your phone and it's not something that you have to necessarily worry about internet for. Um, so these are the things, but you can absolutely do what we are doing and you can do this at home and um, not have to go to a store to get something. 
and this is what you can use and it's growing right next to the plants that are going to cause cause the reaction see how this one's kind of dried up yes i'm yes. not going to use that yeah. one but all the ones that still look vibrant and lively mm -hmm. we will absolutely use but if it's dried up we're not going to use it so um, you use this too? yeah this is where all of the juice you feel how wet it is yes that's yes. what we're looking for we're looking for that to be able to oh i was thinking you don't want this no but we no, want it no. that's where the best I'm also kind of inspecting anything that looks kind of funky or just setting aside. You know, you want to get the, the best of the plant matter if you can uh, to be able to use. And if you can't, use what you have. Um, but if you can, if you can be a little bit picky, go for it. Um, but we're gonna chop up what we can, leaves, flowers, and all. Okay. You told me I can use this. Yeah, okay. use that. Yeah. So you know when when we dad gets poison ivy, this yeah. is what you wash yourself with. Oh my goodness. Yep. How do you learn so much? You have to learn. If you don't learn, you can't teach. Yep. And somebody might need it. Mm-hmm. So that is a good bit that we are ready to now fill up the jar with the, your, uh, with the witch hazel. And again, you can use, I think Liz Neves. Oh, do I have that book? Is he? Mm -hmm. This one? Oh yes. Let me see that one. Yeah. Um, Liz Neves wrote northeastern medicinal plants and she shared her formula which i was going to open up real quick um, just to show that you can you can use it uh, she actually does an infused vinegar so that's one part of your fresh plant matter to two parts of your apple cider vinegar i actually really like the idea of apple cider vinegar and i will end up doing that but I have witch hazel right now. That would be, that's a really good idea. But she will blend this up and um, put it in uh, your ice cube trays with water to make like ice cube jewelweed little, little cubes. So in the event of that you need it, you can actually take this and just rub the ice cube, which I think is great if you have little kids that if they get stung by a bee or if they get bit by a bug sometimes that ice is going to you know that ice is going to help numb as well and it might be easier than spraying something on uh spraying something on but uh we're going to use witch hazel and there are many different ways that you can do this which i think is just easy so i have my witch hazel Now, that was one bottle of witch hazel. What you don't want is you don't want the plant matter to be over um, exposed on your, from your menstruum, which is uh, the liquid that you're using. So I gotta get another bottle, which I have one already ready for me to go, and I'm gonna top this all the way. So when you get bit by a, a gnat, yeah, this is what we're gonna give you to use, and it'll help. It'll help make the pain, the sting and go you away. And the bees too. Yep, stung by a bee or anything. And look this how, thing black like this, I don't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So look how pretty that is. Oh my goodness. So now we just let that sit. Uh huh and we'll check it i will check this every single day um just shake it up and i'm gonna go ahead and just store it in yeah. a, a cool dark place when this is done we're gonna take it and i'm gonna strain it out so basically i just want the liquid and that's gonna go in little spray bottles that we'll all kind of keep and it's also nice to have and carry around a spray bottle when you're foraging so if you have a foraging um emergency 
herbal first aid, this would be one that I would put in my herbal first aid kit because again, I am tromping through the woods and I am constantly rubbing into plants <laughs> that, um, you know, might, might cause a reaction. So you, you might want to consider having something like this on hand. And I mean, that was simple. That was easy. Now the next big thing to do is to label your jar. And I'm going to go ahead and put its scientific name as well, which I do have to reference on spelling. Today's date. And also it's a one to two ratio, um, which is one part plant matter to two parts of your menstruum kind of eyeballed a little bit. And it is in witch hazel. And that is it on that. I'm also gonna do, uh, make sure to write on the Ziploc bags um, once we, once we go ahead and, and do this. Go ahead. We'll start filling bags. This is enough. Biggest thing is is just making it small enough yeah. to be able to fill. Yeah, and this one's not so nice looking, so. And I've got more more as a bag. Mm-hmm. Since we've got a couple of extra here, how I would do this in the wild <laughs> is I would just break up what you can, squeeze all that juice out, and then rub. Now, I want this one actually. Now if I needed it as an emergency, all of that moisture that was in the plant softened up the leaves enough to make what you would use as a poultice. And then I would put it on my affected area, just like that, and just let it sit, or just rub it. Rub it all on the area that you might need. Your skin, it doesn't, it has a very green, your smell, it smells green. Yeah, it, it smells does. fresh, Yeah. so it doesn't stink. Um, but if you needed it like immediately, that is how I would do it. See how much moisture is in that? That's what you would use to make a poultice. And it's very soapy, um, which is the, the saponins that are in it, which is what prevents the volatile oils from your, from your poison, from your poison oak, poison ivy, um, but it's soapy. Very, very soapy. In fact, I would love to make a jewel weed soap, um, but a lotion or a salve would be something that I'm gonna play around with. And I think, I think if I could do it, it would be definitely freeze drying first, possibly. Um, but again, I gotta play. That one's where I gotta, I gotta do my research because I don't think anybody has ever done that before. I do know some people who have tried it, but it, it's got to be a very, very ventilated, very, very ventilated area in order to prevent it from, um, from molding. Okay, this, this is crushed. Yes, we'll just, and we'll, it's not really trash. We can absolutely use it, but I think what we have is enough Yes. And we'll just put it back in the bowl and uh, and take it and yep. let it go. Yep. 
Oh, good. Yeah, look, we got four bags. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now, when it comes to the roots, I'm gonna bring them back down to the house and spray them off because there definitely is still a little bit of mud and I will use them, but for right now, we did what we did and this I'll just need to clean up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so I will keep you posted on the next part of this process, which would be pressing this out and then also, in the meantime, I'm gonna do my research on freeze drying, um, freeze drying. Regardless, we've got a bunch that's put up in the freezer, whether we're gonna use it right now or we have it to the next year um, until this plant comes back and is ready to be harvested. But other than that, we'll keep you guys posted and thank you all for coming along with my grandma and I. And okay. as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty <laughs> and learn something old. I'm gonna say bye. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>